In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it's exciting to have our children over here receiving the first time, receiving the Lord into their heart and their mind. We're excited with that joy. We acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you feed the hungry and care for the poor. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your healing touch brings wholeness and life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are just in all your ways, holy in all your works. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. 
let us pray. O God, who have accomplished the work of human redemption through the paschal mystery of your only begotten Son, graciously grant that we who confidently proclaim under sacramental signs the death and resurrection of Christ may experience continue increase of your saving grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. This is what the Lord Jesus taught me, and I am now telling you. At supper, on the night before he died, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after he gave thanks, he broke the bread and said, This is my body, which I am giving for you. Take and eat this bread. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Take and drink from this cup. Do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowd so they can go to the village and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all that we have. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down in the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing and took the loaves and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about five thousand men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Again, God is good. Oh. All the time, all the time. God is good. <laughs> it's tricky, right? I miss you guys dearly. I don't know if you guys miss me, I, but I love you. I miss you dearly. I hope the e learning was interesting and fun at home. Um, but I can't wait to see you more often as we are going back together. So today, I am so excited that you guys are going to receive the body of the Lord into your very self. I pray for you and excited to, uh, to see you receiving the Lord. So doing e-learning, right? Do you like donuts? Do you like to eat donuts? Yes. You nod your hats. So during e-learnings, if your parents are so excited that you guys are here, I mean, are at home, and they cannot uh, get their works done, and they say, oh, you love donut, right? Give you one donut. <laughs> so donut, imagine, right? A donut, if there's a hole in the middle of the donut, we have a song for that. Life without Jesus is like a donut. It's like a donut. Life without Jesus is like a donut. It's like a donut. Life without Jesus is like a donut because there is a hole in the middle of our heart. So, friends, today we're going to receive the body of the Lord so that it can fill the hole in our heart. So imagine that, like the donut, right? If you have the you know, chocolate or vanilla filling in the middle, it's even more tasty, right? So life with, that, with Jesus is like that, right? It gives us more flavor into our life. And as our bigger sister, every read the first reading from St. Paul, right? We get to know the word from St. Paul because St. Paul got the re revelation from the Lord. And in the reading, we hear it clearly, right? Jesus say, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body. Right? We know that we have a God who loves us dearly. 
So at home, if your parents love you dearly and when you are so excited and you need more donut, they give you a donut, right? As a sign of love for you because you are hungry or you need more energy at home, right? And then for the Lord, our Lord Jesus, He knows us we desire to go to heaven, not the netherworld, right? We want to go to heaven so badly, but we are still on earth. That's why Jesus said, how about I'm going to give you a taste of heaven? That is His body and blood. That's why before He came to heaven, right? He said, let's make a sacrament so that my beloved sons and daughters, we have a taste of heaven on earth. Is it amazing? We have a God who loves us dearly and willing to give us the body and blood of very Himself. So there's one little girl in China. So in the past, when the communists come over to China and they destroy every Catholic church, so they went to the church, right? And we know in the church, there's body of the Lord, right? Is Jesus is contained in the tabernacle over there, right? So the communists, they went to one church and they destroy everything. They broke the pews, they break the stained glass windows. And then there's a little girl who witnessed the whole thing. Her name is Anna Wang. So there are around 30 hosts from the tabernacle. And the communists, they just scatter the blessed Lord around the floor. And that little girl, Anna Wang, saw that. And she said, it is the Lord. How can people put the Lord on the floor? So every single night, Anna Wang, she sneaked in the church because she was so tiny that she was able to go through the door without the God notice. And then when she approached the Holy Eucharist on the floor, right? It's the body of the Lord. Before that, she prayed in the church for an hour. And then when times come, she approached to the little tiny host on the floor. She kneeled down and then she consumed the body of the Lord by her tongue because she knows that it is the Lord. It is the Lord that will give her life. And she appreciated the gift that the Lord gave her. So day after day, until the last day, she was so happy because she said that finally, the Lord is no longer on the floor. I will consume the last one and it will be all right. So she did holy hour and then she knew down and then she received the Lord, the last one. But unfortunately, when she came out, she stepped on a broken glasses and the guard no noticed her. But friends, she doesn't care, right? She said, there's the Lord over there on the floor. I want to receive the Lord because the Lord loves us dearly and she wants to receive that gift of life to herself. So, friends, today you're going to receive the Lord into your heart as well with the image of Anna Wong in mind, right? We approach the Lord with a sense of respect, a sense of awesome, right? Because the Lord is going to be in our, go to our body like a donut, right? When you eat donut, what do you become? A donut? No, right? <laughs> the donut is in your body, but you still yourself. So when we receive the Lord, the Lord is going to enter into ourselves and make us more holier, more like the Lord. And then if you are holy enough, at one point, you can levitate, right? Because look at Mother Mary, right? At the very day today, we celebrate the Assumption, right? So we believe that Mother Mary assumed to heaven, right? Why? Because she has the Jesus in her womb. That's why she is able to go to heaven straight. So with that in mind, right? Like hot air balloon. If we put Jesus in ourselves at the end of our life, we're going to go to heaven as well. So in short, like donut, right? We have Jesus in our life. It's going to give us more meaningful in life. Secondly, because Jesus gave us the gift of very himself, so we're going to consume him into our body. 
so that we will be more like Him. Thirdly, when we consume our Lord into our heart and body, when it's time for us to come, we're going to be assumed to heaven. So I mentioned that, and I'm so excited that we are moving to the second part where the priest will, by the word of the Lord, transform the bread and wine to become the body and blood of the Lord. And you're going to receive it. So we pray that we have the Holy Lord coming into our very self. Now I would like to invite the communicants and their parents to please stand. And now I would like to hear your response. I do loud, proud, and clear. Are you ready? Yes. Let's renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestow on us forgiveness of our sins, give us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. And please stand. Confident of God's con unconditional love, we pray for our own needs, those of the Church, and those of the whole world. For all who lead us in the church, may they feed us with the word of God and the body and blood of the Eucharist, which gives us eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, our prayer. For all who lead us in the world, may the peace of God live in their hearts so they can unite, it, verse, unite us in fighting poverty and injustice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community of St. Julie, May we grow as a spiritual family in the love of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our first communicants, who for the first time will receive the Lord Jesus in Holy Communion, may they always follow him as faithful disciples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the people who are sick, may they receive comfort and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, May they now live forever at the heavenly banquet of our Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, you have loved us with thy limit. Hear the prayers we offer today. May your love transform our hearts and guide our actions. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen.
Brave brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good all of the Holy Church. Celebrating the memory of our salvation, we humbly beseech your mercy, O Lord, that the sacrament of your loving kindness may be for us the sign of unity, unity and the bond of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for the Last Supper with his apostles establishing for the ages to come the saving memory of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by his sacred mystery. You make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so, we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, gracefully make holy this gift we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, 
as we celebrate the memory of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Julie Billiard, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Blaise our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. Forever and ever. At the Savior command and form the bite divine teaching we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with Spirit. and for the sake of safety, we ask that you offer each other a wave or a nod. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter my room. Only say a word and my soul shall be healed. As you come forth for Holy Communion, please do so at the instruction of the greeter assigned to your section. As you exit your pew, please exit to your right and return on your left. We ask that you maintain the six-foot safety distance. All first communicants should remove their masks before sanitizing their hands. All others should leave their masks on until after they receive the body of Christ in their hand. We appreciate your help in providing a safe worship space for all. So children, remember, put one hand above the other one, and then with the respect, right, we approach to the altar. When the priest plays the Holy Communion in your hands, you take it and you consume it and then say amen, all right?
On behalf of all the First Communicates, I want to thank Father Tierso, our pastor, and Father Tone, our associate pastor, our catechists, and our, and our parents for helping us celebrate this very special moment in our lives. With your good examples, we will always be faithful followers of Jesus. Amen to that. I'm so proud of her, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, I just love it. I just love it, especially when I give you the body of the Lord and you say amen. You truly believe it? And do you feel the body of the Lord running inside of you now? Yes? Yes? It's beautiful that like your younger sibling, right, want to receive the Holy Communion as well. So friends, you are super old now because <laughs> you receive the Lord, right? So there's a responsibility for on your shoulder. You should be the good brothers and good sisters to your younger sibling or to your, your friends in school, right? To show that you have the Lord within you because whatever you do, we're reflecting the love of the Lord to your friends. So, big responsibility that you have to take. Uh, and like the hot air balloon, right? If you want to go to heaven, you need to have, have, have a lot of air in the balloon so that you can go to heaven. So receive the Holy Communion as often as you can. So parents, your responsibility, I think. <laughs> Let us stand. Let us pray. May sharing at the heavenly table sanctify us, O Lord, we pray, so that through the body and blood of Christ, the whole family of believers may be found together through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And one final announcement, we will be doing pictures afterwards. If you care to have a picture taken with our pastor and associate pastor, please just be seated after the song is done, and the greeters will escort you up, alternating families from each side. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.